I don't play competitive online multiplayer games as a rule. Now there's a few tiny exceptions to this, but I've never loved online competitive gaming at all. I grew up in the days of couch co-op. My shooter years were spent playing Halo and Modern Warfare in my friends' bedrooms and college dorm rooms. I just never made the jump to online gaming as the first stop for a fun night with friends. But also, I just kind of hate what esports has done to casual gaming generally. I play games to enjoy myself, to enjoy the game, not to be sweaty or tilted or whatever other euphemism we've come up with for, I don't really like playing this game right now. Sure, I enjoy a few rounds of Overwatch now and again, and I've got no problem with things like Among Us. In fact, I've had a lot of good times playing the online version of the board game Dominion with friends, but I never touch ranked play in any online game. It just is not fun to me. Hell, in the original Overwatch, I got too stressed out just playing unranked because it was hard to have fun. And that's why my obsession with Marvel Snap makes zero sense at all. Sure, it's a card game and it's got Marvel in the title and Marvel on the cards and I love all of that. But this game is only ranked play. So if I hate online competitive multiplayer games, why have I put over approximately 240 hours into this game? What is this game doing right? Honestly, the main thing this game has going for it for me is that it's not a shooter or a MOBA or whatever other kind of game has been esportsified to death. That over the top energy drink Twitch highlight reel energy is repulsive. Now I've spent a decent amount of time watching Overwatch League. It's like the one esport that I've kind of enjoyed watching, but even that is too much for me a lot of the time. And that's not even to mention all of Blizzard's other issues. And look, cards are fun. Cards are chill. I enjoy card games. Like they're low energy, they engage my brain, and you know, I'm actually pretty good at them. That's definitely a large part of what's going on here. I've spent the last eight or nine years playing a ton of deck builders, either in board game form or in video game form. And I know that I enjoy that already. Honestly, it's at the point where my husband sees a new video game with cards in it, and he just assumes it's going to be my new favorite game. And while he's usually not right, this one hit. And maybe that's just because I loved Marvel for a very long time. Some of my favorite TV shows growing up were the Spider-Man animated series and the X-Men animated series. Hell, if we're talking about comic adaptations generally, I was also very into all of the Batman animated series, the various ones they had over the years. I'm also super dedicated to watching every MCU release, and I have spent a decent amount of time actually reading comics as well, at least since the 2006 Civil War run. I think if Snap had come out and Second Dinner, the studio that made it, had partnered with like, Power Rangers? I don't think I would have been as into it. I definitely would have played. Power Rangers was also a formative thing for me, but it's not a thing that's like stayed relevant in my life. Marvel plus cards is kind of the sell for me. And I really love how they map characters' powers to their card abilities. Absorbing Man copies the on reveal abilities of another card that you've played. And Shang-Chi, shown delivering a powerful punch on his base card, destroys all opposing cards with power nine and up. Hulkbuster, that Iron Man suit that Hulk wore in, I believe it was Infinity War? It buffs and merges with a random card at a location that you play it on. These all make sense for the characters they're representing. These abilities and the abilities of the locations that you play them to make the game a blast. Not to mention that this game is really simple to understand and it's pretty short. Your only goal is to have the highest power value at two of the three locations at the end of a six turn game. And that's simple, even if the game does complicate those basic truths as you progress. Games like Magic or Hearthstone or hell, Yu-Gi-Oh even, tend to overcomplicate themselves as a way to keep the game fresh and to keep you know dedicated players happy. Snap on the other hand is wildly successful and fun, I think for new players, but also for players who want to go that hard and want to dig into the wilder levels of its gameplay. One of the more fun parts of this game is snapping. It's in the name. We all know about the Thanos snap. You see, every game, there's this cube floating at the top of the screen and it starts at a one. But if you decide, hey, I think I'm gonna win this, you can snap. You can essentially double your bet. There's a lot of poker vibes going on here. And it gives your opponent maybe the consideration of do they want to retreat? Because that's an option. Again, poker vibes, you can fold or you can double down. In this game, if you retreat early, you're only gonna lose one cosmic cube. 
If you're only an MCU person, you might remember the Cosmic Cube as the Tesseract from the first Avengers movie. Cosmic Cubes are how you progress through rank in Marvel Snap. And you can win one, two, four, or eight Cosmic Cubes in a given game, depending on who snaps. But I think the biggest thing that has made this game somewhat successful is that it's not really pay to win. You see, you get cards just by playing the game. There's a lot of currencies in this game. It does have some of those unfortunate trappings of a card game or a mobile game. That said, there's two free currencies, credits and boosters. Boosters are card specific and credits are more general. If you want to upgrade your cards in rarity, you need a certain amount of credits and a certain amount of boosters for that card. And depending on the level of rarity that you upgrade a card to, you gain more and more what's called collection level. Collection level is really how the game is tracking your progress. At early collection levels, you're collecting cards in a set order. That way, everyone starts the game with the same base set of cards. Then there is what's called series one or pool one. And at the end of pool one, you're gonna have all the pool one cards, but you'll just get them in a random order on the way there. There's a pool two or a series two and a series three, and more recently a series four and five. Series two operates the same way series one does, but at a certain collection level, you start getting series three, four, and five cards. They're kind of all mixed in together. Series three is more common, series four is more rare, and series five is even rarer. But generally, again, if you played this game for a few months, you would have all of the cards without spending any money if you didn't want to. You can advance your collection level by buying the non-free currency, gold, and converting that into credits. However, you're still gonna need to find a way to get those boosters, which means that you really do have to play the game in order to get those cards. You're not able to just spend a bunch of money on booster packs so that you can unlock all the meta cards. You do have to play, and also, it's pretty balanced in terms of who's playing against each other. As far as monetization goes, I'd been saying that Marvel Snap was the least predatory card battler game that I'd ever played. Really free mobile game generally even. And that leads me to what Marvel Snap gets wrong. We just got a patch to Marvel Snap. And when I opened up the shop to see what free things I could partake in, I was greeted with this cyber holiday deal. Now. If you've not played this game, 7,500 gold might not mean anything to you, but consider that there is a button down near the bottom of the shop where 8,000 gold is $99. And I'm sorry, I just don't think that there should be a button where you can spend $100 on digital tokens and an art variant in a mobile game. Make this more reasonably priced and I'd be okay with it. There are far too many studies showing that the FOMO that these games generate leads to people overspending, going into debt, and generally not making life good for themselves. And yes, just because a few people don't have that control means that it shouldn't be done. I don't wanna break down the value in game of each of the things that are in this bundle. It comes out to more than $100. That said, the point is that you should not be able to spend this amount of money all at once in a game like this, period. And listen, Marvel and Second Enter know this because they limit how much gold you can convert to credits every day. This means that you can't keep spending money just to infinitely increase your collection level and unlock everything at once without playing the game. Apparently to them, the only sin is pay to win. Shout out to this person named Among Us Potion in the official Marvel Snap Discord who pointed out that $99 in US dollars is 140 Canadian dollars. That's nuts. Another thing I don't really love about this game, but I unfortunately have engaged in, is the cost of certain art variants. Now you can get a card in this game and it might be say Ant-Man. And Ant-Man has a base art that you're gonna see all over the place. But over in your shop and sometimes in free progression caches, you can either buy or get for free art variants. Think comic book cover variants if you've ever been in that world. And in fact, me playing this game has uh, made me start buying comic books for the art. In fact, all of these except the like kind of black and white Electra Daredevil one are in the game. That's why I bought them. And frankly, I think buying the physical books is a better deal, not just because you actually own something and should Marvel Snap ever go down, you've now spent money that goes where, but also because literally it's a better deal. Most of those books right there were about five bucks. Plus shipping, sure, but there are 1200 gold art variants in this game and that's around like 17 US dollars. 
And I'm sorry, but I didn't pay 17 US dollars for any of those comics on that shelf over there. This game also until the recent patch was missing artist credits. Something that frankly, I would have wanted in my 1.0 where I'm making this game. If you don't know already, Marvel and comic books generally have a pretty bad record with crediting and paying artists fairly. Essentially, the whole industry is very work for hire. So you get paid for a single job and then Marvel or whoever it is owns all of that IP, even if you created a character. A year before the first Avengers movie came out, Jack Kirby's family lost a lawsuit against Marvel. They were trying to get rights back to all of the characters that Steve Ditko and Jack Kirby and Stanley created together, or at least get credited or paid for the work that was clearly making Marvel and the Disney company billions of dollars. But because the contract that Steve Ditko and Jack Kirby and many, many other artists since then have been working on is work for hire, they simply had no legal standing. This is a case where these contracts don't have to be written this way. I think of podcasting. I've talked about this in a video before too, where recently Brittany Luce and Eric Eddings had a row with Spotify and Gimlet where they were like, hey, we created this thing of value and we are no longer at Spotify and would like to leverage it. And they basically said, so what? People like to bring up that these contracts include that everything you create belongs to these companies. And my point is that those contracts don't have to include those things. They could be structured differently. And you know, the people with power just don't write them that way. In the case of Marvel, Many, many people know Stan Lee's name, and many fewer people know Jack Kirby or Steve Ditko's or any of the many other artists that have worked in the decades since those two. Artist credits at launch in Marvel Snap would not have erased that history. It wouldn't do anything to make the existing industry any better, but it still would have been nice. And I think the real tell is that this was a common question from players of Marvel Snap. Hey, who made this art? This is really cool. I wanna see it. Maybe I wanna buy it. Maybe I wanna buy the book. That's huge. That's literally how I got into this stuff over here. And it seems like from the conversations on Discord and Twitter with the Second Dinner team, that it was just something they hadn't considered until fans asked after public launch. Sure, I'm reading a lot into messages from Ben Brode and other people on the team but it kind of seems like they just didn't build the database for the cards that way. And that tells me they didn't consider it from the beginning. In the latest patch, a lot of the variants are named artist name variant. A few of the variants before that had been named like baby variant or pixel variant, but I don't know who drew the pixel variant, right? I don't know who created that baby variant. Those are not really my favorites, but I still would like to know who made them. And again, not every card in the game has some identifier like that. Some of them just say variant. And I would like to know who made those too. In fact, some of my favorite ones don't have any credits at all. This game has turned me into a comics variant cover hunter, and I can do it pretty well, at least with the help of, you know, reverse image search. But to bring it around back to the beginning of this video, Marvel Snap, got me tilted. This game desperately needs unranked mode. And listen, to Second Dinner and to the people that you are gonna throw this in the comments, I know unranked is coming. I know battle mode against friends is coming. And I am anxious for those because I'm at a point where I'm pretty good at this game. I have gotten pretty far up in rank and any rank loss really gets me anxious. I found myself Googling the other night how to deal with tilt and ending up on like poker reddits to understand what people are talking about. No, that helped. I've started by just like playing less of the game and when I start to feel bad about it, not playing for a few hours. And that definitely helps. But this is the reason I don't play these kinds of games. And the only reason I've continued is because I like the base game so much. I know I spent a lot of this video kind of ragging on what's wrong about Marvel Snap, but I truly love this game. I like can't say that any more strongly. And in fact, you're gonna hear more about this game and another Marvel game with cards in a future video. As a game, Marvel Snap's stupid fun. It's got all my favorite characters, it has really accessible deck building, and it has combos that make my brain tingle. It's also got a little over $100 of my own money, and I can afford that right now. But 
I wonder how many people who can't afford that feel that same pull to spend. And I don't have to wonder about all the people that Marvel has failed to credit or pay over its own history. I don't know that I'll recommend this game as much anymore, but as long as I'm still having fun, and I very much still am, I'm gonna keep playing it. And if you wanna see any of that, I'm also Matt Horton on Twitch, and I started a new TikTok and a new YouTube channel called at Matt Horton Snaps. I'm not gonna take those as seriously as I take this channel, but they're there if you're interested. Also, when battles come out, if you wanna hit me up and play a few rounds, I am totally down. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.